I hope you were able to complete the assignment. That is pretty straightforward. In the div row here, let me minimize the first two here. We will create a div, give it a class of column 12 and padding 4. Perfect. Inside there, I will have an h2 with a class of text success here. And let me display product table. Then, finally, we need to work on our final table here. Let me add some classes here, table striped. Inside there, we will have a T head here. Inside there, we will have table row. And there with TD, the first column is name. Let me add that as product name here. Copy the TD and paste that two more times. Next, we have price of the product. And then whether that product is active or not. Perfect. That looks good for the header. Then we have T body. Let me add that. And in T body, we need for each loop because we have multiple product, we need to display all of them. So we will say variable prod in product list. Perfect. For each one of them, we will have a new row here. And in the TD, let me add input fields. That is what we want. Whoops. We have input type is equal to text and then we need to bind that so bind and we will bind that to prod dot name we need to change the default event as well so bind and then we have event i will update that to be on input let me fix that copy that td paste that two times the next one will be price here and finally will be is active with that we do not need the bind event and type will be checkbox perfect i believe that looks good let me run the application and see what happens let me go to bind prop here and perfect we have the product table we have name price and is active that looks good for our assignment. Now we have a final piece of assignment where we need to display product summary for the product table. There you will basically display product name, price in square bracket and whether that product is active or not. All three of the properties that we display of the product here, they are two way binding to the table. If I update price here, it gets updated. If I update name here, that also gets updated and even checkboxes have two way binding. So good luck with that assignment and I will show you the solution in the next video. For the final part of the assignment, after the table here, we need to display product summary. So after the table tag, let me add some line here, br tag. And then in the H2 here, we will display product summary. For that again, we will have a for each loop variable prod in product list. And we need to display a P tag here where we will first display product name, prod.name, price is in square bracket, so prod.price. We will say is and then whether that product is active or not so prod dot is active perfect we will display this product of price and if that is active or not now because we are using two-way binding here we do not need to update anything that will automatically be updated if i save that my application is already running let me go back here and perfect you can see midnight blaze price is false now rather than true or false we want to display whether that is active or not so we can use ternary operator if that is true we will display active else we will display inactive save that here and perfect we display whether that product is active or not we modify here and that is working as expected 
with that we had good practice of two-way binding here and that looks good it's time for your next assignment you need to create a new component with the name of demo product and when you navigate there you can see the route here is learn blazor demo product and that is where you will create the component now of course you can give a different route and create it in some other place but for this tutorial let's follow that convention on that page we will display the two product and that product are exactly the same that we are using in product table here so you can copy how we populate and generate that list in this new component then you need to display product followed by id of the product name of the product and there will be a new checkbox show properties if that is checked here then you will display the product properties else they will not be displayed you will also add a delete button here but that will not be functional it should be a recap of what we have learned so far in blazor but i want you guys to practice that before you move forward so good luck with that and i will show you how to do that in the next video now we need to create a new component with the name of demo product let me close all the tabs other than this one and we will navigate here in the pages folder where we have learned blazor we need to add a razor component let me call that demo product now what is the first and most important thing in a component is whether we can navigate to that component or not and that we can define using the add page directive you can see here we had that on the top here and for this one also we will go to learn blazor forward slash let me call that demo product as well and that looks good but here we will add a forward slash if you do not add that you can see there is error automatically so by default it requires a forward slash at the end when you are writing the navigation route for that blazor component then before we work on anything we need to add that in the nav menu here let me copy the counter that we had paste it one more time here we will have anchor tag we are not using the nav link right now and the route is learn blazor forward slash demo product call that the same demo product here perfect let me run the application and see if that works we will navigate to demo product and perfect that works after that we need list of products we can copy that from the bind property here where we have the code block let me copy that and paste that in the demo product here remove this one and we do not need the individual product let me remove that perfect that looks good we have the on initialized and we are populating the product list here next thing that we need to work on is the html here for the h3 let me make it h2 give it a class of text primary and perfect next we need a div here let me add some border padding 2 margin top of 2 and let me give it bg secondary for a background color perfect add a div give it a class of row and there we need a for each loop to iterate through the product list and display the product that is pretty straightforward with what we have done so far so prod in product list here and we need to work on some styling class of bg light here border margin one and column five let me add the closing div perfect now in that div we need h4 for the heading give it a class of secondary and let me call that product we need to display the id here at we will say prod dot id next property is name of the product so prod dot name 
and we have a checkbox here show properties where we'll have the input type will be checkbox and we will bind that with prod dot is active let me save that and go back we will have to rebuild let me wait for that and perfect it is coming along here we might need to work on few things but let me fix that later with the styling we will say if prod dot is active if that is active then we want to display the properties we can copy that from bind prop here where are the properties it will be here somewhere product properties copy that well this is a drop down we need the actual value and we did not have a for each loop let me write that we will say for each here variable product prop in prod dot product properties we will have a p tag here and we will say prod prop dot key hyphen prod prop dot value i believe that looks good let me see that and yep that looks great rather than column 5 let me make it column 6 here remove the margin and let me remove the secondary that should be okay and yep that looks good remove the border here as well perfect we have two product that looks good if i check this here that is working and great finally i need to add a delete button here let me do that type is equal to button and give it a class of btn btn danger let me give it a style of width 100 pixels value will be delete save that here add that to the next line here and let me also add a br after the name here save that and perfect show properties is in the next line here that looks good now i want to work on the delete button but before that we have never worked on the buttons in blazor but so far we have never worked with buttons in blazor let me walk you through on how we handle clicks with buttons in blazor if you want to see a simple example you can take a look at counter here but let me show you something else you can take a look at counter here but let me write that from scratch here that way it will make more sense let me go back here we are in the demo product where we have the class of row let me create a div give it a class of row here and let me copy the delete button that we have make that as a counter and let me give it success color save that perfect we have that button here let me add padding top here and we need to display a value for that we need a variable here let me add an int here for count and set that to be zero let me display the counter here and that will be count save that and perfect looks good let me cut that before here and perfect we have the counter here what i want to do is when i click on counter here this should increment let me call it count here and i want to increment that by one if you remember we had on click event in typical input similarly in blazor we have that but this time we will use the at on click and there we will have the function name i will call that increment count here and we need to create that now where will this method be created that will be in the at code block here let me minimize the on initialize it will be private use the same name let me copy that increment count perfect what we want to do is on the count here we want to do plus plus it will be a void we do not have a return type here 
and that's it adding a method in blazor is as simple as that and we can trigger that using on click now the real magic of blazor is if i go back here and click that it works if you had to do the same thing in mvc or c sharp then you would probably need some javascript code to make it dynamically render on the ui but this is the power of blazor so you can see how much interactivity we get with blazor now the counter is increased automatically and the ui is also automatically re-rendered so with that you can see how easy it is to add on click events on button and dynamically change the ui by adding a method inside the code block here modifying the parameter that is being displayed now many times it is possible where you have the methods here like increment count you want to invoke or pass some parameter you cannot pass a parameter like this here in order to pass that you will have to convert this to a lambda expression and then you can pass parameter if you pass it like that here then increment count we can have a counter here you can see the error goes away and count we will say plus equal to a counter so if you have to pass parameter you can do that using lambda expression let me save that and go back here and now if i refresh here it will increment by five every time and that looks good so with that you have seen how we can pass parameter to the method calls here and based on that we can increment on whatever parameter we pass to the method now it's time for an assignment i want you guys to implement the delete button here and when we click delete button from the product list it should delete the product and that way the ui should automatically re-render and only display one product i want you guys to think about how you can accomplish that and i have walked you through the basic fundamentals using the counter button so good luck with that assignment and i will show you how to do that in the next video i hope you were able to implement that button if not let's do that together we need to add an on click here let me copy this one paste that on the delete here and we will call that remove product we need to pass the product id here that is inside prod dot id and we need to accept that let me create that method it will be private void remove product and we will get product id here perfect in order to remove that we first need to fetch that product prod is equal to product list dot first dot default where u goes to u dot id is equal equal to the product id we retrieve that product here and then from the product list we will remove that pass the prod here perfect if you want you can check here if product is not null only then do that and perfect that looks good I believe i forgot the closing bracket here great let me save that go back here and let me try perfect that works i removed both the product if i refresh that comes back because we are not storing that in the database so when we refresh it it will call the on initialized again and populate our product list with that we have implemented a temporary remove product and that looks good